returned to Galilee, and reports about him spread through all the surrounding countryside. He began to teach in people's synagogues and was praised by everyone. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. Jesus unrolled the scroll, and he found the place where it was written, and he read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to his attendant and sat down. The eyes of everybody were fixed on him. And then Jesus said to them, Today this scripture is being fulfilled, even as you miss. Gospel of the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Are you well? Yes. Are you wet? No. Some of you are wet. Some of you are not too wet. Thank you for coming. I know that maybe some of you are coming from work this evening, or the weather hasn't been great and it's taken some some effort maybe to be here. So thank you for coming along uh, tonight. My name is Adrian Egan. My name is actually Adrian Jared Egan. I think the plan was that my first name would be Jared. But my mother's doctor's name at the time was Adrian, and I think she had hoped I'd be a doctor. So she called me out as a doctor and put Jerry in, in, in for a second. But Adrian, Jerry, Egan. And I'm a native of Limerick City, and I've been living back in our monastery in Limerick since 2008. I have been some years up in Belfast before that. And it's lovely to come and to be here for nine days of the lovely one. This church here is actually very special to me because it's here on this altar that I took my first vows as a redemptorist. I had done my novitiate here in the monastery, and I took my first vows 30 years ago, uh, on the 1st of September last. So in some respects, it only seems like yesterday. In other respects, it's a long, long time ago. Uh, I was also, the last time I was back here was in 2010. I was here at Mabina preaching at that time, and one of the highlights of my life happened during that Mabina. I met the front page that was the headline news in the Argus newspaper for a sermon I preached at the time. And I've carried a copy with me ever since. And I often show it to people and say, there was my, there was my moment of, of faith. Uh, just a few uh, announcements. Again, just welcome everybody here. You know, I suppose we, we have not been as a little part of the country, but every one of them still obeys us here. It's an extraordinary event in a thing like this here in your hometown of, of the Lord. If somebody was to say to you in the early of today that had never been here, that ten times a day, beginning at seven o'clock in the morning, we'd fill a church over and over and over again throughout the day with thousands of people that think you were on some kind of town that you want. But that's what's happening here. Seven o'clock this morning, this church was packed. And it was emptied and packed again over and over again, and we'll until the half ten sessions. So, this novena is for all of you and to the people of Dundalk and to the surrounding areas. It's an extraordinary gift to have. So, mind it, protect it, never take it for granted, and, and, and keep on promoting it and encouraging people uh, to come. Just appreciate the gift of, of this novena. You're asked to be courteous in parking your cars. With so many thousands of people, lots of cars, lots of difficulty in finding parking and so on. But we are very patient and hospitable neighbours, and there are also other businesses operating around the streets here. So just be considerate towards neighbours and other businesses. Don't block entrances or exits to houses or to businesses, and don't block in any other cars. And there's one particular note please do not obstruct the order of motor ambulance parking bay in Mill Street. I'm told that if you do block, in order for Malta to help with this parking bay in the street, you may well find that your car is actually in Malta when you return looking for it uh, again. Confessions are being heard before and after all the sessions in Molina, and as always, huge parts of Molina are the petitions and the thanksgiving.
meetings and there are lots of places around the church where there are petition leaflets. Either take them home with you or write them out to the church. Write out your needs. The reason you're doing the novena, what you're praying for, what you want to give thanks for, and place them back in the boxes. They're all gathered in, they're all read, they're bundled together and place the shrine. And we read some of them out at every session of the novena. And they're a huge important part of the novena too. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I left Limerick yesterday and to come up to the dog, and as I was driving into the dog, I saw the various signs around the town and on the outskirts of the town in further Novena. But there were other signs as well, but one in particular caught my attention. The sign for the Dundalk Music and Society. Their production of the Fiddler on the Roof is coming up uh, on October 15th, I think, playing with the Dundalk for four nights. Any members of the Dundalk Music and Society here tonight? No? There, you're not, you're not admitting it, you're keeping it quiet. But uh, I was delighted to see that sign because uh, I love musicals. And I fulfilled an ambition of my own. When I went back to Limerick in 2008, I joined up the Limerick Musical Society. And I've appeared now in two of their shows in Oklahoma two years ago. And just earlier on this year, we did the Vita. Do you know what part I had in the Vita? I played the part of the priest. That's uh, typecasting, if ever there was, but um, and next year, the next one we're doing is the Witches of the Eastwick. I'm thinking of going for one of the lead roles, one of the Witches, but we'll wait and see. Anyway, my favorite musical of all time, and I think it's the same for many people, is My Fair Lady. You know the musical? Lots of you will have seen the film, and you may even have seen the musical. There's one particular well-known song in it that comes to mind, and I want to put you to the test. I want to see, you have to be of a certain generation, I suppose, but I'm going to start singing it, and you might sing it with me as, as you come out of what it is. You ready? I have often walked down the street and the pavement always stayed beneath my feet before. All at once I
or there may be just a hunger within you, or a longing within you, and you're searching and wondering if this is the place where you could be set down and satisfied. You may have seen the crowds coming here and just follow other people. You may be somebody who's longing to be set free from a hurt, from a past, or to find healing for an illness, or to have a burden lifted maybe that has weighed down upon you for a long time and you're wondering, is this the place where this could happen? Where you could be set free? You may be somebody who's feeling very alone or isolated or frightened and you just want someone where you might feel a sense of belonging. Whatever it is, whoever you are, whatever it is that brings you here, and no matter how long it's been, since you've been inside the door of the church, in this church, or any church, no matter where life has taken you, just know that you are welcome here. Always welcome in the presence and in the company of Jesus. Something within you longs to be in the company of Jesus, and so you come. And you're right to come. Because here in God's house, in the presence of Jesus, there is no other place on earth where you're more welcome than you are right now, right here, in this place, at this moment in time. And there's no need to hide, no need to pretend. God knows us better than we know ourselves, and no need to leave any part of ourselves outside of the And if you look around you, you can see that you're not alone. All of life is here, all kinds, and every kind of people of all ages, all sizes, all types, all backgrounds. Looking through the petitions today that have already come in and have built up to this novena, and will continue to come in the thousands, I know from reading those that there are people here for whom life is going well, for whom faith is strong, and who are here maybe to give thanks for the good things that are happening in their life. And if that's the case with you, if life is going well with you, and you're here to give thanksgiving, we rejoice and we give thanks with you. And long may that last. But I know too that there are many people here who are in trouble, desperately in need, carrying that need maybe privately that nobody else might know anything about it, longing to hear or feel something that will lighten the burden, make them feel less alone, where they feel that in their need they can feel welcome. There are people here who are in financial trouble, worried about paying bills, worried about sickness or illness in themselves, or in others that they love and care about. There are people here praying for the child and the life that's growing within them as they go through a pregnancy, hoping all that will be well. There are others here who are anxious and praying and hoping that God will bless them with the gift of children and new life. There are people here anxiously waiting for the results of medical tests. People may be here who have trouble with the law, people whose marriages or relationships are in trouble, causing them pain and not knowing what to do. People here trying to get a life together again after maybe spending time in prison, or people affected by problems of addiction, or people anxious and worried about major decisions or life choices they have to make. There are parents here worried about their children, their children's future, their children's relationships, their children maybe leaving home and having to go a different road. There are people here who are gay, who are straight, people here feeling alone, depressed, frightened, carrying the pain maybe of grief, loss, people here who feel hurt, people who might feel ashamed, people who feel guilty, people who feel sealed and not the margins. No matter who you are, no matter what you carry with you, no matter what's going on in the street of your life, you are welcome here. Why? Because you are God's creation. His children made in His image. And because God loves you, and the Spirit of the Lord is always upon you, you are welcomed here. And I'd say to you as we set out on this journey over these nine days, come here each day as you are, bring with you whatever is going on in your life. Over these nine days, please God, with the help of St. Jared and all the other saints, none of whom were ever perfect, but who knew how much God loved them. Over these nine days, to be here with each other, through the power of each other's prayer, may all of us encounter and meet Jesus. May our eyes be fixed on Him, and may we hear Him say to us, I bring you good news. I set you free. I lift the burdens that weigh down upon you from you. 
I set you free so that you may see and be healed. And at the end of these nine days, you may leave this place, as we said earlier, feeling several stories high, knowing that God is with you, and that Jesus is with you, right on the street where you live. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.